Hi and welcome to Lincoln Chiffen Crafts Needle Felting Tutorials. I'm really looking forward to teaching you how to needle felt this Highland cow. So we're going to start with the body of the cow. If you have the kit, you will have a size guide in there. So this is the, the bit that you're working on here. If not, doesn't matter. You will need about 15 grams of wool tops, probably no more than that, probably a bit less, uh, about 30, uh, 60 centimetres in length, if that helps. And this is a dark brown Shetland that I'm using. Really, really nice sort of medium coarse wool that felt really well. You can, of course, use carded for this part of the cow. So the trick is to start by rolling up and getting it really firm. You can either use a rice mat like I've got here or a, uh, a foam mat or anything that's just going to support your work. If you are using a rice mat I always suggest that you um, recommend that you use a, a, a piece of flat felt on top just a thin piece just to protect it and make it last longer but just so you can see it properly today I'm, I'm just going to go straight onto it. Okay so start rolling up don't even touch your needle yet keep rolling in and tuck those sides in with your fingers you want this nice and firm keep it going if it starts to unravel go back to the beginning look how tight that is and then take your needle this is just a standard 38 needle this will do the whole job for the for, for all of the cow and just start to felt that just so it holds It's quite quick, this part of um, making the Highland Cow, actually, because it's just a really simple shape. And then continue to roll, turn that over, felt the other side. And we're not really going to concern ourselves with a specific shape here. It is just a rough guide. And keep rolling that up. Keep tucking in those sides and you see how that's nicely building up now and again and don't worry about seams showing any lumpy or bumpy areas remember this is going to be completely covered by that really nice top coat we're going to put on flip it round And it's just so it holds and push right through to the center and then what you can do is if you've got a template there and you've got your kit then you can just pop that up against the guide and that's not that far off actually we may not need all of this wool Now, I just want it to be a bit longer, so I'm just going to move that wool up towards this end of the cow. Just to lengthen it a little bit. And then just pull those edges round with your needle. Tuck that in. And you, again, don't worry about anything that looks untidy. Not going to see any of this. And then just bring, bring that round nice and tight. Keep moving it around. And then catch all those loose, those loose ends. And that's really all there is to the body. We're just going to work it a little bit now. Just to tighten up these loose top areas. And can you see now, when you're actually working the top areas, if you go at a diagonal angle, then you're going to felt this wool that's on the top layer. If you're pushing right in, you're not actually going to be felting this part. So go in at a diagonal angle. Remember to keep that needle nice and straight. 
And don't worry if one end's um, fatter than the other end, it really doesn't matter. Usually happens. And can you see how that's, it's firm, but it springs back. And then if you've got your kit, then you can see that's just about the right size. And it doesn't have to be perfect, it's just a guide. So just continue. Just to felt those top layers and I've got a little bit that's just a bit baggy here so just use your needle gently to pull it round the good thing is when you're doing a when you're using a like a 38 or a 36 standard is also really good and um, they're quite tough these needles I think you can see um, they don't bend really easy they will break easily but as as long as you um just um always using it in a straight line you can actually use that needle to, to pull the wool round. It's a really useful tool in that sense. And there we go. So that is the body of your cow all ready to go. So what we're going to do now is make the head to go with that. So you need a much smaller piece of wool for the head. Um, I think, if I remember rightly, yeah, you're only going to need about five grams. So this is what you're going to end up with. And the procedure is very similar to the body, but we're aiming for more shape on this. We're going from sort of like a, a, a fat triangular shape. But we'll we'll focus on that back bit when we've um, as as we go on because we'll build it up. So take, let's say, about five or six grams of your wool top. Again about 30 centimetres in length, pop that to one side and we're just going to do it, start off exactly the same so really pull this wool in nice and tight, I've probably got too much wool here so I'll be pulling some of that off, so then you probably only need about five or six grams tops but you really want to keep this firm, firmer than the body, because, this is why we're felting a little bit earlier, this is going to have the detail added, and we're also going to use um, a technique um, where we snip into it with scissors to scruff up the face. So you want this to be really well felted because you don't want it to come apart, and when you add the eyes and, and your little details and the nose, you don't want to squash in the features and um, spoil that shape that you've just created. So just pull those sides in. So just work this a little bit more slowly. Don't do such big chunks as you did with the body. Okay. And again, continue. And you'll probably naturally find that you'll have um, a fat end and a thin end and that's fine if you haven't it doesn't matter but the highland cow has a really sort of squat nose you know whereas a, a horse or something like that would have quite an elongated nose this doesn't it's quite it's quite sort of flat and as you're going just pull over the wool just to neaten any areas. This is where we want this to be a neat finish but we can do that at the end. Don't worry too much about it now. So pull that round and keep going. And keep it nice and tight. This is not the finished piece yet. I'm going to add some more wool to this. And that nose end as well, if there's a few lines, don't worry, and, and lumpy, bumpy bits, because we are going to pop some wool over the whole end of the nose, so this won't be visible either. So I'm kind of treating this bit as, as the nose end, you know, the, the, the actual nose area. So it looks a bit odd at the moment, doesn't look anything like that, but you can see where it's going. Okay. So what we want to do now, we just want to flatten this back area a little bit and see where we're at as far as 
creating that triangular shape is concerned. So work from the back, be careful of your fingers and just start to flatten it. When we actually finish the cow, this back area will be covered in our top coat. So flattening it doesn't matter. If the whole head was visible, then, you know, we'd want to create something somewhat of a, a, a nicer shape at the back. But it really doesn't matter. So don't be too precious. And can you see now, I'm, tr um, I'm starting just to move down the side of the head towards the nose at a diagonal angle. Now, this is because I want to just flatten those sides. I want to start creating that triangular shape. And can you see how that's just starting to to come now and then we'll just we'll just pull this wool over the front of the nose here because I don't want any loose bits and let's really start to firm up these sides now again not worrying too much about the shape because if it's not wide enough at one end which this probably won't be we're just going to wrap a little bit more wool around But what we want to do is get all these loose areas nicely tucked in. And we can also use our hands to shape this as well. Your hands are great tools. So, you see we're getting there now. But we really need to flatten this back end a little bit more. So hands flat. And you use the needle straight in. Turn it. And if you keep your hands flat, then that will um, help you avoid poking your fingers. Okay. Now, it's a bit fat at this end. I can't really see the nose here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll just gently in my hands. Can you see how I've lengthened that? But I've got some loose wool here now. So let's just pull those ends over again. If you're a complete beginner, then um, if you go onto my YouTube channel, you will find all my basic body shapes video tutorials. And I really do recommend you have a look at those because they do take you through all the basic steps. And if you go onto the Lincolnshire Fencrafts blog, there's a ton of stuff on there for you to sort of get lost in. Now, can you see how I'm just working this? I'm just working from the nose now, just to about a third halfway up the side of the head because I want to leave the back end a little bit wider. Keep turning and moving it around diagonally. And then what we'll do is we'll roll that front end again in our hands, but we'll just, we'll just roll that front end, not the back. And then we can see if I actually need to add any more wool but can you see how much this wool has reduced I mean it must have reduced by at least half I would say to what we actually started with but that's beginning to and then can you see how you can squish it as well you can squish with your fingers so just I don't want to overdo that bit because I don't want to keep loosening it so again we're going diagonally and you can work this for as long as you wish Take your time on this. This is important. This isn't, you know, the body wasn't really that important as far as firmness and shape is concerned. But you really do want this head to be nice and firm. So those details look as good as possible later on. So that's, that's looking pretty good, actually. I'm just going to flatten this back end again. And you will never have two heads the same size either. You'll never have two bodies the same size or shape. That's just how needle felting is. It's quite a relaxed, um, laid-back craft, which is why I love it. There's no sort of tricky patterns It's or intricate stitches. But you can see that I am taking my time on this because it is important. Okay, so if you've got your template there, then... As you can see, that back end is not wide enough yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 
piece of my wool top here and I'm just going to take a small piece off and all we're going to do is just attach that to the back of the head and then we're going to wrap that round quite firmly but not too you know you don't want to to lose it so don't have it too tight and that will just add that extra width at the back end of the head which is now looking better and you see and then all you do just work in a diagonal direction down the face again keep turning that's more like it so you see the difference that just that extra thin strip of wool actually made to building up the head and see how that's blending in because you're using that diagonal direction and we can also smooth it with our hands and again these loose bits that you've got at the, the end now just use your needle bring those over so it's all nicely gathered and secured in the middle of the, the back of the head there and then still some loose wool here where we've wrapped it round and haven't secured it properly yet so again work down diagonally I think I started with probably a few more grams of wool than I needed to but it doesn't matter you can see see how that's widening here and we've just got a few lines there so we'll just again use our needle just to pull that wool over I mean, Highland cows do have really big heads. So I think this is going to be just fine. And let's have a look at that nose. And just squish that in a little bit. And I think that's going to be just fine. So you can work on that a little bit more if you wish but there you go we have our head and our body ready for the next part and what we're going to do here is we're going to create a really small neck it's just to raise that body uh, that head off the body because otherwise it looks a bit squat and you can lose the details so you only need a small sort of pinch of, of your wool top when you're pulling it apart use your hands far away from each other so that the wool separates nicely if you try and pull it too close together all those fibers just lock together and you won't um, you won't be able to do it and then you can either just fold it in and create your shape or you can again roll into a nice kind of short cylinder and leave the ends quite loose on this because we're going to use those ends to attach one end to the head and the other to the body so we would like some nice sort of fresh wool there which makes it um, much easier to attach securely. If you do have a felt it, don't worry, you can just add some fresh wool to the area that you're, you're felting. And can you see that's a very, very rough shape? So we'll just keep going, just keep felting that till it's uh, nice and firm. Felt in those ends a little bit, just but keep that wool, can you see, nice and soft right at the end. And then just keep rolling 
keep rolling and turning, rolling and turning and felting at the same time and that will firm up nicely. Just a bit long. So if it's too long, you think it's going to be too long because you don't want a giraffe, um, push that needle right through to the centre and what that will do is it will start to shorten the neck. And remember, you're going to lose, when you felted it onto the head and the body, you're going to lose quite a bit. So you're going to end up with a size probably something like this. And if it's too thin, don't worry about that either, because when it's actually on the body and the head's attached, you can build it up from there, which is actually much easier. So it's just a really simple shape you're creating here. There we go. So when you squash that down, when it's felted onto the body, that's the shape and size it's going to be roughly, which is going to be just about spot on. OK, that's the first part of the tutorial over. Thanks very much and click on for the next one.